As you may know, my name is Maria. I am currently a graduate student at the Institute for Astronomy, and I just finished my first year. And so uh, my, my story as to how I became an astronomer, how I ended up where I am, it's not super extraordinary. It's pretty much close to a traditional story, but still I thought it was worth sharing it so that you have an idea about how to approach your dream career or um, what are the steps you probably have to take at a certain, well, wherever you are. If you're a first year undergrad or a senior year or a fourth year undergrad, what should your next steps look like? So um, I started my undergrad in uh, fall of 2016, that's uh, September of 2016. I, was, I started off as a geophysics major at UCLA. However, in the following term, in January 2017, I thought, why not add a second major? So I always considered doing astrophysics. I wasn't sure what I really wanted until, un, until I learned about planetary science as a field of research. So for those of you who are not familiar, planetary science is just is the subsection of astronomy, maybe a little bit of geology, where you learn more about solid bodies and their processes and what governs their physics and chemistry and all of that. It is a field of its own, but also very well falls within astronomy. And so in 27, so in that term, I decided to add that major and I started taking the extra class I needed for it. And the following summer, I did an internship as uh, internship and worked as a lab assistant. So as you may know, my internship was not research related at all, which is one important thing I need to drive at this point. Um, it is non mandatory that whenever you're applying, when you're applying to grad school, or when you're applying to a research based career, everything you do as an undergrad should has to be research based. Sometimes you pick up the skills that you need from somewhere totally different. So I interned for a science publication. I was basically working on looking for new stories to talk about, people to interview, and I was also helping them plan this uh, event that was supposed to happen, but got canceled because of COVID. Um, so I guess one of the most important skills you need as a scientist is you need to know how to communicate your science, how to have your feelers out for upcoming popular people, Networking is important. I actually started getting those skills from this internship, which had absolutely nothing to do with science, real research like I'm doing today. And then that was like a month. And then I did this, uh, this um, sort of lab, I did this assistant thing where I worked with um, a lab at UCLA, w uh, which did meteorite analysis. So I learned how sample preparation works. I learned to operate a secondary electron microscope. I learned BSC imaging, BSC stands for backscattered electron imaging. Uh, if you're interested, you should look it up or you could talk to me and I can tell you more about it. Um, and that was my first, state, first taste of how scientific research is actually done, what it means how um, university lab works, the whole team di teamwork dynamics, how research is done as a group and how people operate instruments, especially, you know, if you have this one instrument and everybody in that field of research uses that instrument in your university, how, how that works, the little, you know, the little subtext, probably not significant, but very important details that is a part of research. I actually picked it up from this uh, lab assistant position. And then the following term, I had, so this was 17 summer, and then um, fall of 2017, I just took a break. And then the next term in January, 2018, I took a term off from school and I went to do a project at this uh, facility in India, which comes under the government. Um, so a lot of people don't take a term off from school, but some of us do. Sometimes people take a term off from school because, um, you know, maybe they have, maybe they get an internship or a job opportunity like I did, or maybe because they just have some personal things to deal with and they want to take a break from school because you're not, because it doesn't feel good. And honestly, that is totally okay. If you do have an option, I know, I understand there are a lot of people from different countries, different educational backgrounds over here, so it's not always possible. But if you feel like you don't belong and you need you need a break, it, please please uh, be aware it is totally okay to take a break. And if you feel like you can do something more productive during that break, that is all the more better. So this was my first real project, and it was a very very good experience. In fact, it was a landmark experience in my undergraduate career because that get, helped me get more research positions down the line. It helped me build a portfolio. It gave put me in touch with a lot of amazing scientists and students, all of who are just, well, they have, uh, who are like now in the final year of the PhD or just finished their PhD and are postdocs. 
Um, I gained some useful skills in scientific research. I also got to participate in some outreach events. All in all, it was a great experience. And I was so glad I took that term off. And then the following summer, I got a research grant uh, from my department and I did, and I picked up the work I did as a lab assistant and made that into an actual project where I was doing X-ray mapping of meteorites to look for carbonates, which is important because carbonates are thought to be these water bearing minerals. Um, and, and that was, that lasted an entire term and my summer term as well, which is super useful because out of it, I got to eventually present that research and the research I did in the previous term as a poster uh, in under various undergraduate poster sessions. Uh, so one important aspect of doing science is you just don't ask a question or look for a solution, but you also communicate your results. A lot of people do it through talks, through seminars, and for undergrad, for undergrads, and even stu graduate students in general or early career scientists, research posters are very, very important. Uh, you get to present this really nice, beautiful graph, a big graphic with all your, um, with your, you know, your uh, experiments, your or whatever models you created, your con results, conclusions, and you get to present it to a lot of people who may or may not be aware of your of your particular subfield. Uh, it is a great way to connect with um, your peers at similar stages of a career or more advanced or more junior to you. And you can learn a lot from them. You can learn a lot about what else is going on in your field. And it is a very useful and learning how to present your science is a very, very useful skill. And it's very important too, because if you don't know how to communicate your science, you're not, you won't be able to get the exposure that you need. You probably won't be able to you know, get a good job or get a good brand or actually put yourself out there and make people aware of what you're doing. Because having people know what you're doing is important for you to create a niche within your subfield as a scientist. And in the following term, I started, um, so I took a break from research for one term just so I could focus on my academics. And then the following term, I got a new research project. And I also joined the review board for an undergraduate science journal. So, uh, pub so the other way of communicating your results to the public is by publishing it. For undergraduates, it's not often easy. Sometimes you don't do um, very groundbreaking research that is uh, publishing worthy in bigger, in bigger journals in like, you know, ABJ or science or nature or something like that. So a lot of what under, so a lot of undergraduates, they opt to publish their research in undergraduate science journals, which are usually of, uh, of their university. They're only, they're usually peer reviewed science journals, meaning they're legit, they are registered. And if you publish an article in that, it does count as a published, it does count as a published work for, you know, purpose of USMA slash applications. Um, and I joined the review board of that of the undergraduate science journal because it, I hoped it would give me an experience to know how pub the pub uh, how publishing works, what is the what you know what things go on behind the scenes once you submit an article. I mean these are and these are the real processes that happen in with real with bigger with bigger more popular journals. Except since this is managed by us undergrads and you know a few mentors, it is more downsized and more undergrad friendly. And I joined the review board. I worked with them. I got to review articles from not from uh, different fields, like from life sciences, from geography, and also got to interact with a lot of students uh, from different fields, but all of the, all of whom were doing research and were going to apply to grad school. And I also submitted an article based on my X-ray mapping project, and which surprisingly ended up an award. Also, because it was like only the two, two, there were only like three papers in physical sciences, and it was. And I had the best pictures, so I guess it was easy to get that award. Um, and then I did a summer research at Caltech. Uh, SURF over here is just summer undergraduate research fellowship. And I had this theoretical project, which was quite different from whatever I did, because I'm not a theorist. I'm more of an observer slash experimentalist. And so theory pro this theory project was uh, sort of crucial so that because I could then really determine what kind of projects I needed to do in grad school or what are the skills that I had, what skills I needed. And the advantage of doing summer research as a part of a summer program in another institution, uh, in a lot of US institutions, they have this thing called REU, Research Experience for Undergraduates. And even I know, um, I know like in India, where from where we have a lot of students in this program, they have these similar programs in various um, national science facilities. 
uh, the advantage of doing projects as a part of these summer summer programs is that you not only do your project, but you're exposed to a lot of other things as well. You have these continuous professional development programs. Uh, there are, you know, you have these lectures that put in touch with various other faculty in your field. You have these you have these training programs that train you in different aspects of student life, research life. So in my time at Caltech, I had these seminars which taught me how to work on graduate app grad school applications. I had seminars which taught me on how to approach various faculty for research, uh, for research positions. And we learned how to network with our peers. We learned what were useful networking skills. We learned how to write a resume. All of these, by the way, which we will be teaching you here. Um, but yeah, doing research at another institution is quite different. It also teaches you how things can feel when you're outside of your, I guess, your familiar home ground. Um, and yeah, so it was a very useful experience. And I got to meet some really, really cool scientists at that time. And I was, I, I felt more aware of what was going on, going on in my subfield. And later on, the following term, in following term, I was able to get another research grant to work on this new project that I started in the, earlier in the year, which was on comets. And um, I officially, and the second major that I was only thinking about and started preparing for, I was able to officially add it at that term to make it official on paper. And I also attended the AGU's, the AGU conference, American Geophysical Union. It was my first major conference and I realized it was so much different from a regular undergraduate poster session. It was a really large conference. It was held in San Francisco at that time and it was and I think it was the last in-person conference I attended before the pandemic. I haven't attended an in-person conference ever since, actually. Um, uh, it was it, it was very big. It was, I would admit, it was daunting. But at the same time, it helped me put in all these lessons I learned on networking, on presentation, on science communications that I've picked up in the various programs before that. And certainly it was a challenge because we had to make a plan on how to navigate the many talks, the many posters, the many lectures that were going on at the conference. And at the same time, you need to know what is the most useful thing you need to get out of it. So I think attending a conference at that point in my career, this was, um, this, this was my final year in undergrad, my fourth year. Uh, I think it was a very good decision and it was a very useful experience which went into my resume. And then eventually, the following term, I proposed my senior honors thesis. So basically, um, most degrees, I, I'm not gonna say all because I don't know if it's true for all, but most um, degrees in most universities, they have an honors option where you would do a thesis or a project that lasts maybe an entire academic year or few terms or most or half a, sem a semester or two quarters of an academic of an academic year. You further investigate this topic of your choice and you prepare a thesis you, and you present it and you get an honors degree. And so I proposed and commenced a two part thesis because I was doing two majors. So I had to do two theses essentially. And so I just took two different aspects of comments. I took the shape of comments and activity of comments. And then, but uh, it, I started it, it was going good, but a bigger challenge came up in the end of that um, COVID. And it was very, it was, it was a very significant change in my undergrad life because now everything shifted online. I got a summer, I got a summer internship, a summer internship I've been looking for, but that got canceled like a lot of other summer programs just because everything had to be done in person. And that, at, that, at that time, no one really knew how to make that transition from completely in person to completely online. I also presented a part of my thesis at this undergraduate research symposium, and I ended up submitting my senior thesis and got the honors that I applied for. Um, and so because I took the term off for another research position, as you recall, I, said, I mentioned a little earlier, I had to take an extra term uh, to make up for the last few classes. I uh, My summer would have been empty, but then I took up something called some, uh, some of my, gen my general education classes because I had to fulfill those requirements. And I started, and it was at this point, I started my research for grad schools. Uh, when I started my undergrad, I was always aware that I wanted to apply to graduate schools. So um, I made sure I was on top of my work. You will have, you will have a session on how graduate, graduate school applications work. So I'm not gonna go in depth into it, but I just wanted to put it here so that you understand the timeline of where, or the timeline of how I ended up here. 
And then obviously I had a virtual, and obviously there was a time when a lot of people were having virtual conferences. I was able to attend one to present some part of my thesis. And I was also able to write a guest Astrobytes article. If you don't know, y'all should look it up. Astrobytes is this really nice science journal that comes under AAS where um, graduate students uh, write uh, articles based on recent publications. They basically make actual science papers a lot more easier to understand and shorter and much less boring. And occasionally undergrads who do research can write guest articles like I once wrote. And so eventually got into grad school and last, um, last year, August, I started graduate school and now I'm working on my first project. I have attended a few workshops. I've done a lot of outreach. I would highlight participating in workshops are so important like this one because um, these help you develop the necessary skills that you think, you, you may not think they are essential at some point, at a given point but they would certainly prove useful to you sooner or later. So besides academics and research, the other two things I wanted to highlight are my involvement in outreach and student organizations. Why? Because it was very pivotal to my graduate school application and also just in my overall development as a student. So outreach is basically, you know, participating in these activities that include that help you communicate, help you bring science and actual hardcore research to the public of all kinds. So I worked at a meteorite gallery because I did meteorite research at some point. I volunteered at science fairs, at telescope viewings, and I also gave talks, and I still do, to children and to schools. And I help in organizing school level science events, like you know, judging at a science fair exhibition or being a proctor at science Olympiad and writing the science Olympiad exams at state levels, since stuff like that. And student organizations, I necessarily, I did, I did was a part of science level student organizations, which helped me um, develop some important team building, team coordination skills. I worked with a science and a space science and engineering group. I'm not an engineer, but I did learn some engineering skills from that. I also worked with this news media group that helped me work on my writing and communication in general. So I know I've gone over time, but just a few main takeaways from the reason why you have mentor profiles is so that you understand where each of your mentors came from, how their journey to where they are today to sort of give you a slice of their life and hopefully help you, uh, hopefully inspire you to do something great and accelerate your journey towards where you want to be. So the main takeaways that I, that I, I guess I can give to you when I look back at my life is one, your academic journey is not just about class or grades as you when as you would learn in your grad school application session research is really really important so is your involvement in a lot of other activities uh, finding research opportunities is extremely important if you if you plan to pursue grad school because you should be able to convince your admissions committee that you're capable and you're interested about uh, diving into a question and working till you find a workable solution to that question uh, teamwork and public interaction is a very important part of science You should, because science is not done individually, it's done as groups, and you're not a scientist unless you can communicate those results to you, the public, not just your scientific community, but just by like people from other fields and just people who are not scientists at all. And that's useful in your training as a scientist, and that comes from participating in outreach events and just talking to people about what you do in general. And sometimes taking a step back from school or science or your regular academic life can give you a perspective and help you reconsider and be firm in your choices. And that was uh, very important. And that happened to me when I took my term off and when I talked to, when I was working with other non sciencey groups. And as last but not the least, professional development workshops are very, very useful. This workshop right here, it is a useful platform for you to learn these skills that you need, which you may or may not learn in classrooms but you should keep that going even when you're in graduate school. And once you've learned enough, you can come back as a mentor and train even younger students. So yeah, that's about me. If you have any questions, don't feel, uh, don't feel shy. Feel free to email me or any of your other mentors. I'm sure we all have valuable lessons to give you.